So it's packing day, and um, we've got a wedding to shoot tomorrow, and the first thing that I do is I organize what equipment I want at which stage of the wedding. And this is my sheet that I put down on a Google spreadsheet, and then I print it out, and it has basically what lenses, what bodies to use at different times of the uh, wedding day, and that way my assistant can grab exactly what I need because I always found that I lost too much time trying to decide which lenses that I needed right then there, there on the spot when I could have just had it organized beforehand. So on the sheet, of course, we start off at the uh, dressing room. And on the dressing room, I've got the uh, A6000, which is very simple camera, but it's extremely fast and focusing. I can get this thing to go up to about 11 frames per second and with very good tracking. So this is going to be my favorite in the dressing room. And I'm going to put on that one the Zeiss 55mm f1.8. The reason that is is because the 55mm is, it acts like a 90 millimeter, uh, 80 millimeter, let's see, 55, 27 and a half, yeah, like an 80 millimeter. So it'd actually be like an 80 millimeter f1.8, which is a moderate telephoto, but also very wide open aperture. So what'll happen is this will give us a very, very beautiful uh, fuzzy background, gorgeous bokeh on the lens, and a very nice effect. So that's where all of the shots that we're doing close-ups, maybe it'd be the bride looking in the mirror, putting on an earring or something like that. So I'm going to grab the 6000, it will have that. The A77 Mark II is this guy right here, and this one is the fastest autofocusing camera in the world with a really great uh, detection algorithm for choosing the subject. This one I'm going to have a Sigma 85mm f1.8, and that is a very, very fast, very more telephoto lens, especially when you put it on here, it acts like a 130 millimeter f1.8. So this will give me those really, really tight, beautiful close-ups that will be even more dramatic than what I would get with the 55 millimeter f1.8. And then finally, the uh, a7s, which is this guy right here. This is the uh, most light-sensitive camera in the world goes up to 409,600 ISO. I shoot it very, very comfortably at about 25,600 noise-free. I can't see the noise at 25,600. You start to see maybe a little bit at ISO 100,000, but I found that 25,600 is really all you'll ever need. And so what's nice about being able to shoot with a variable ISO like that is I can put this camera on manual, and I can just say, you know what, we're indoors all day long, so I'm going to have it wide open at f1.8, and I'm going to have the shutter speed at maybe 1 one twenty fifth of a second and then leave it like that because I'll know that at 1 one twenty fifth of a second I'm not going to blur due to uh, motion shake and also my subject's not going to move around so even if we're in really low light I've got the ability to shoot at a relatively high shutter speed completely wide open and let the ISO uh, vary itself and you'll see on the shoot how handy that is auto ISO is one of the best things ever invented for automatic photography because you can actually shoot manual and yet get the correct exposures. So that's the dressing room kit. This one will have the, um, because this one is full frame, it'll have the 24 to 70 2.8 millimeter. And this is a wide to moderate telephoto lens. This is a very, very important lens for shooting anything that's kind of full room shot. It's a very nice wide angle lens. So that will take care of the dressing room. And so again, on this sheet, the assistant will just basically know that Gary's going into... Oh, it also says here on the A7S, there will be a flash unit, which would be the, uh, the A60. That'll go on here with a light sphere, and that'll basically do the thing that we always do, which is light up the room very softly for those larger full room shots, but we want to have consistent color. And so my assistant would then just basically go, oh, it's real simple. He's going to go in the dressing room, grab the 6000 grab the A77M2 and the A7S. 
he wants these lenses on it, and then boom. And most of the time, actually, I'll have those three bodies on me because I might see something and go, oh, wow, that's a pretty moment right there. Let's use the 55 1.8. I think I can get in closer. Let's put the 85 on and get in even tighter. Let's get the whole room. Let's do the 24 millimeter wide open. So I'll typically have those three bodies either on me or very, very close. Relying on, and I'll just tell you right now, I'll be most of the time on the 55 1.8 probably a majority of the time because I'll be able to move in and out in tight situations and get that beautiful uh, telephoto look. So now let's go to the pre-ceremony portraits. And this is basically when I'm doing portraiture with the bride and her bridesmaids and her family members and the groom and the groomsman, his family members before the ceremony, maybe the bride's portrait alone, groom's portrait alone. So we need a different set of equipment. And during that one, I'm going to use the um, Sony a7R and this is a 36 megapixel camera it makes beautiful huge files the largest in its class until you get into medium format digital so if we're going to be doing like say bride full length or something like that we want to have the best size image possible this one will go with a light sphere with a Sony flash and with a Zeiss 24 to 70 because it'll basically be used for the groups or the full length portraits and um, also, let's see, it says here that I'm going to plan on having an off-camera flash. And the way that works is I'm going to have uh, a Sony with a light sphere, and then we're going to have it mounted on a light stand like this. And so you'll have a light sphere to do the fill flash, but it'll be off camera to give us a little bit of modeling. The light sphere, because we want to spread a lot of light round, even when we're outdoors. And to make it, let me grab the, oh, right here. To make it recharge fast, especially when we're outdoors, I'm using an auxiliary battery uh, source. This is a Nissan Digital. You basically cord uh, and plug it into your flash unit. And what this will do was, is this will speed up your recycling times by about 10 times, which is really nice because then you don't have to wait and you literally could shoot without having to think about recycle time. So this is very handy when you're thinking about shooting outdoors and you need a lot of power and, uh, y you know, it, it's very, very light, but it's completely worth taking. And then we will have the 77... Uh, two, the 77 two with the 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Now this one is for those really dramatic outdoor photos where we want to have a very flat subject, very beautiful, uh, very watercolory soft backgrounds when shot wide open. Now this is a massively large piece of glass but it's beautiful. When you put it on the 77 like this, because this is an APS sensor, this becomes a 300 millimeter f2.8 lens. So you're gonna have to walk a good, you know, 20 yards away or something like that to get the really dramatic shot. But it's gonna be there for that one spectacular shot and that's why uh, that's there. And then finally, for most of the close-up portraits that I'm going to be doing uh, with the bride and bride and, you know, maybe one person would be with the 55 millimeter f1.8 on the A6000. It's very small, very handy, love how it feels, and I'm going to be able to bang off with the great object tracking, face detection, face recognition that this little camera offers, and that'll get me everything I need for the pre-ceremony portraits. Again, now this one will also probably do off-camera flash as well, attached to the radio. So that's what you have, and again, this is the master sheet for the assistant, but also myself. It's, it, this would be a different sheet if I was shooting an all inside wedding, but this is gonna actually be outdoors, so I'm gonna adjust it a little bit. So it's really nice to have this sheet kind of the day before as you're thinking out your equipment needs because I've got so much equipment it could be really confusing and I don't have time during the uh, event dead on the run to decide which equipment I'm going to use. I want to decide that the night before, pick out my utensils for the perfect time of the day and then go to those. Now, the group photos right after the ceremony. Oh, well, let, let's actually talk about when they come back from the aisle. So, you know, during the kiss and during the ceremony. And Oh, I'm sorry, I'm on the ceremony. 
I'm going to rely on the 77 Mark II. This is the fastest autofocus with a really, really nice tracking system called Flexible Expand Spot. And what it'll do is it'll lock on a particular person's face, and then as long as you hold the button down, it won't let go of the face, even when they're in motion, when I'm on continuous focusing mode. So, for example, I anticipate that after the kiss, they'll be coming back toward me, and I'll have this thing locked on the bride's face, and I'm simply going to shoot and not let go, and it won't get confused. It won't try to track the bouquet, or it won't go out in infinity and come back. It will stay on the bride's face as she's walking toward me, so very, very key. Of course, during the ceremony, we want to get in really super tight, so again, I'm going to use the 70 to 200 f2.8, which will make this a 300, and it'll get me right up to everybody's faces during the ring exchange. I can be right inside, uh, basically, kind of the circle. So that is for the ceremony and the return. Now, the group photos right after the ceremony are going to require the largest sensor I've got. That, that, again, we're going back to the A7R, this 36 megapixel. Then I'm going to have a Zeiss 24 to 70 because at, say, 50 to 70, there's no barrel distortion, and that's basically where I'm going to want to shoot this. This will have a flash uh, on the camera so that it'll give a really nice flash fill outdoors. And if it gets really, really nutty, I might throw on the auxiliary flash, but I, I doubt it. So because we want to get through the group photos very, very quickly. So that's that. And then after around sunset, uh, I'm going to take them out and do some really cool photos. It's not actually really going to be a sunset because it's going to set behind the mountains at this uh, facility. But what I want to do is do a very dramatic shot with just them lit and nothing else, you know, the, the rear going very, very dark. So for that one, I'm going to use the snoot. The snoot on a stand with a radio, and that will nicely build a beautiful cone of light around them and take the background light down. And for that one, I'm going to use two lenses, the 74 to 200 and the 24 to 70. This guy right here is also a 70 to 200. It's an F4. I don't anticipate using it a ton, but this is a specially dedicated lens, FE mount, that will turn on eye autofocus, which is a very handy feature, on this guy right here. Any of the mirrorless bodies that accept an FE lens, it will turn on eye autofocus. And when you're shooting uh, very, very open apertures, it's hard sometimes to get the eyeball. You might get the great shot, and then you're focused on the nose or something like that. And with telephoto lenses, that really does happen. So now let's go to the reception. And this is going to be super fun because of the A7S. The A7S, uh, as I said before, will go up to ISO 409,600. But that's not the point. The point is, because it'll go up to that, then it's really hard not hard at, for it at all to go to ISO 100,000. What that means when you're shooting in uh, a range like that is I can set the camera to do my auto ISO between a range of anything, say, up to ISO 50,000 or 100,000, knowing that my images will be noise-free. When you're shooting ISO 50,000 indoors in a candle-lit room, like a, a dimly lit restaurant, you've got an exposure of about 1 500th of a second at f1.8, which is quite incredible because, um, especially with a 55 millimeter lens, I really only need to have this go at about 1 1 25th of a second to reduce shake. That way, the people won't be moving, my camera won't be blurring. Again, remember, the shutter speed should be an inverse of the length of your lens. So if your lens is 200, 200 millimeters long or 300 millimeters long, corrected for the APS sensor, you should be shooting at 1 300th of a second or faster, which would be 1 500th of a second. But when you're indoors and you're shooting with a 55 lens, then it's kind of like an 80. You'd want to be at 1 1 25th of a second. So I'm going to be shooting really, really fast shutter speeds in very low light, and that's only possible with the A7S to have such noise-free images. And then I'm going to have the A6000, the standby camera for, and honestly, I could shoot the A6000 a6000 for the entire wedding, and I thought about that. Why don't I just shoot the whole thing with the A6000? But since I'm going to, you know, do 
a job that I normally do, I want to use the finest equipment that I can. And so that's why I have all these other tools. But I could do it with just this, and I will be relying on this a lot. This one will be holding the um, 24 to 70 Zeiss. It starts to get pretty big and bulky looking, and then it'll have a flash on it. Of course, that's a Zeiss Alpha lens, so I'm going to have to put an adapter on it. And as you can see on my sheet, that there is a column that is, says EA lens adapter, and that's why. So the assistant knows, snap the adapter on, because it says yes on the A7S, and uh, for the, you know, for the A6000, yes for the 24 to 70, so that there's no loss in speed. I don't have to stop and think about what to tell the assistant to grab. And if I don't have an assistant, then it would just be me. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to go in the dressing room, I'm going to reach into my case, and I'm going to pull out these three pieces. You'll notice that at any time I don't have more than three bodies uh, configured, and that's because it wouldn't really be realistic to go around dangling four bodies. But three I can, one on each arm and one around my neck. I look like a uh, tourist doing that, but that gives me very, very fast access to my cameras, and I can just blow away and, and get really the most awesome shots. So that's basically that. I'm going to rely on the sheet. The sheet is pre-planned, uh, you know, nights before the wedding, after the consultation with the bride to find out, you know, or maybe seeing the venue or knowing the venue, what equipment to use. And then I'll put it all together and have that. Also, I'll be taking the um, kit which has my color gels on it because at a certain point in, uh, in the evening, I'm going to want to go with uh, incandescent white setting so that I can make the sky blue for some of the photos. And for that, I'll be using the Amber Dome. And the other most important, most important part of this entire kit would be the Gray Dome. The Gray Dome, and you'll see me do this a lot, as soon as we get to a location where we know we're going to be doing portraiture, I'm going to do a custom white balance on the Gray Dome. Now, you could do an auto white balance, and these cameras are pretty accurate for that. But when you're standing on a lawn or maybe next to a big red brick building, it's going to really screw up your auto white balance because it's going to confuse the camera. The camera's going to see daylight in the background, but there's going to be a lot of red on the subject, and it's going to not know, should I you know, factor in the sky or the red on the subject? Maybe I'll do something in the middle. With this, you can get the perfect light that's going to go on their face, and it'll be standard uniform throughout your entire shoot, and that's why this is very important. So when we can, we're going to stop, take just a split second, do a custom white balance with a gray dome, and then we're going to go on our merry way and shoot. All very effortless, all very simple, even though it looks complicated, it, uh, all the complication is in the preparation. Once we're there, we don't want to have to think about all of this stuff and uh, what should I use, and meanwhile there's a whole bunch of really important things going on. Okay, so that's that. Now, let's get to...